ASA Fire Wands Failover. I think it's going to be a very interesting topic. Failover. Why? Well, we love redundancy. We like and we put two routers. What do we run? For instance, HSRP. What do we do next? Well, we go and connect to ISPs. Then we put two call switches. What do we do? We connect two ca cables and set up ether channels. We love redundancy. It is important. Why? Imagine this is Mike. Mike is a very, very busy guy. He goes to Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Yeah, That has been a very busy day for him. He goes here and he opened a Facebook page and he reads some news on Yahoo and this firewall dies. Mike is not going to be happy because he really wants to check this unbelievable story about a boy who whatever. That's why we can put two firewalls and ask them to monitor each other, check each other and see if one fails the second can take over. What do you mean fail? Well there are a lot of conditions that we can set up. This box can die, an interface can go down, ASAs will keep an eye on many things to make sure that your network is okay. We have two main failover types, modes. It's active, active and active standby. Active, active and active standby. Before we move to these guys, what active means, it means an active ASA is a firewall that is forwarding our traffic at the moment. That's a very basic definition. Passive one is waiting for the primary one to fail. So what does it mean active active? Very good, you guessed. Both firewalls will forward our traffic. Active standby? This one we decided you are my primary firewall. You're the line manager, you're the manager, you're the boss. You are going to watch him. If this guy goes down or an interface goes down or you can't reach him, then say, you know what guys, now I am your firewall. I am your manager. Please use me to browse the internet. Please use me to access a server that is connected over here. What about our user over here or a user here? Let's say Mike opened a website, Facebook, and he decided to post a very important picture from his last evening. Then John decided to go to Facebook as well. Why not? And he is reading what Mike is uploading at the moment. This box dies. What will happen to these two sessions? Well, of course they will die. They will be dropped. Will this PC recover when this firewall kicks in? In most cases it will. Maybe they will have to refresh their website. Still, not a good thing. What we can ask our firewalls, we can ask, let's make can you make sure that you exchange all important information between active and passive? Can you make sure that you know what this guy is doing? Why? Well, because if you fail, I can take all your sessions, for instance, on NAT translations and have it ready for John and Mike. What you have to bear in mind is that not everything can be exchanged between your firewalls. There are things that will not be sent and passed to the standby unit. For instance, routing tables. 
user authentication tables. What you will be allowed to see on your standby unit? Well, Active will send things like NAT, TCP connection states, ARP table will send HTTP connection states. A lot of important information will be sent down to our standby unit. Now you say, okay, I get it. That will be my, let's say, active. That will be my passive. This one is our primary firewall. We browse the internet. How will this firewall tell John and Mike, oh, 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 this firewall is down. Use me now. Do you remember HSRP? Do you remember how it worked? Two routers. And then they're connected over here. And there is a PC. HSRP, in HSRP you create a virtual IP address. Something that both routers will share. It's a virtual IP address. It's, let's say this one is dot one, this one is dot two. Virtual IP address is dot three. What does it mean virtual IP address? Virtual MAC address as well. This PC will have a default gateway pointing to dot three. If this guy is your primary HSRP device, then it will say, oh, I own this IP address. I own that MAC address. If this guy dies, this guy says, oh, okay, now I should take over. That's how it works with routers. In firewalls, Cisco decided to approach this problem in a different way. What your ASAs will do, let's say this one is again our active and this one is our passive standby firewall. If this one fails, this guy will take over everything that this guy had. What we mean by that, it was it will even assume the IP addresses of this guy. It will take over the functionality of our active box. It means, yes, that's what you are thinking. If this one is dot two and this one is dot two, it means that this guy here, over here, will be dot one. If you, if you studied HSRP before, you can see a big difference. In HSRP, we had a virtual IP address. It means something that was shared between these two devices. In ASAs, what we have, just to say it again, if this guy is active and this one is passive, let's say it's dot one, this is dot two, that's active standby. If this one fails, this one says, okay, it means I am dot one now. It means I am firewall one. And to be honest, even when you connect firewall, the host name will be the same. It's firewall one. It's like having one big firewall. Of course, there are two boxes, but they will, they will replicate the information. They will claim, oh, I am firewall one now. It's time to move down to point number three, failover requirements. There are a lot of requirements for these two boxes if we want to make them a pair, active standby or active active. It is all listed on a Cisco website. The easiest way to do here is to run ASDM. I'll show you that in the next video. ASDM is going to check everything for you. To summarize, what you have to have is, for instance, failover boxes, they have to be the same model. They have to have the same number and type of interfaces. They have to have the same RAM size, okay? There are some software requirements as well. For instance, they have to use the same firewall mode. You cannot have this one to be a router and this one be a transparent mode. You cannot have this one as a standalone single 
cont single context firewall and this one is running 55 contexts you can't have it the easiest way again is to run ASDM I'll show you a picture for now because we'll do that in the next video that is one of the screens that you will see when you when you run ASDM wizard ASDM is going to check if all these things match okay it will check okay can I connect my second firewall uh, am I 100% that the platform is compatible is license enabled yes you need a license today you need a license for everything everything that's the easiest way to check of course you can go and download a list from Cisco and do it by yourself in most cases it's pretty easy you have these firewalls in place you know what they're running they should be exactly the same to make it simple I have two ASAs already set up in failover pair in a failover pair I sh I'll give I show you some basic show commands you can do we will set up a failover pair later on from scratch show failover is the main command you need you can put a question mark and see what's available you can be more specific and see state interfaces and so on show failover is going to be your favorite command inside what you're going to find is a lot of important information first of all very basic one yes failover is on this one is more important it says that yes we are active I am on a active and active firewall I can see my standby passive waiting for me I can see my mates I am also looking checking the following interfaces and they are okay that's what you can read of course there's there are things like timers and more information if you type for instance interface you can see more information feel free to play with it I'm connected to my backup second standby firewall let's do show failover on this guy you will see that yes I am on a standby device what I want to show you here is what your ASA is going to report when you type conf t you will see a warning saying okay mate that's not a good idea you should not make any changes on this box because we are a standby unit just to prove my point what do you remember when I described how how the failover is set up on the ASA that's it's like one big running config they will exchange everything it's the same IP address and so on I will change the host name ASA01 take a look ASA01 that is my standby it was sent to my second firewall straight away oh, oh my host name has changed my host name has changed just in case I fail you should know you're not ASA, you're ASA01. Thank you very much.